Hello, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Work continues on the downtown streetcar system, and recently the Kansas City Streetcar Authority revealed the name and branding for the new downtown streetcar line. The simple and immediately recognizable name KC Streetcar has been chosen along with an original brand icon, wordmark, and color palette. The icon provides a uniquely Kansas City twist on the international streetcar icon. It incorporates a friendly feel with the modern look of the streetcar vehicles the city has ordered. It is designed to work with the upcoming regional transit rebranding while making it easy for visitors to use the streetcar. To see images of the approved brand identity, visit KC Streetcar website or kcmo.gov. Do your kids like big shiny trucks? Bring them to Truckapalooza September 20th in Parade Park. This fun and educational event will showcase more than 35 city vehicles, including KCMO police and fire department equipment. KCPD's Mounted Patrol will also be on hand. Kids and their parents will learn about city programs and safety tips while they fill out a punch card in order to enter a grand prize drawing. For more information, visit kcmo.gov. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. September is a great time to be outdoors and KC Parks offers lots of activities from which to choose. Celebrate the commencement of youth soccer season and the completion of Phase 2 construction for Swope Soccer Village on Friday, September 12th at 4.30 p.m. The complex is located at 63rd and Lewis Road in beautiful Swope Park. Back in November of 2013, Phase 1 of the Village opened in time to host the Big 12 Conference Soccer Championship. Today, the Village features six additional full-size synthetic soccer fields, upgraded restrooms, concessions, and parking. A new art sculpture, Triple Bloom, by local artist Jake Balcom of Metal Design, commissioned as part of the city's 1% for Art program, will also be unveiled. Follow at Swope Soccer via Twitter for details. Art and music combine for a fun weekend, September 12th to 14th, along the banks of Brush Creek. Stroll the creekside walkways from the plaza eastward and enjoy artists painting landscapes and cityscapes for a juried competition. On Sunday, from 3 to 7 p.m., local bands perform in the Tice Park Amphitheater. The concerts are free. Bring lawn chairs and refreshments and enjoy. Visit brushcreekartwalk.org for the complete lineup. Support our City of Fountains. 88 paintings of local fountains by 67 artists are available for purchase in an online auction running September 5th through 25th at kcfountains.org. The paintings can be viewed online and in person at the Buttonwood Art Space located at 3013 Main. Half of the proceeds from the auction will go toward the Wish Upon a Fountain campaign to renovate fountains in need of critical repair. Is your family up for an adventure? If so, make plans to camp out Friday night, September 19th in Swope Park. KC Parks will supply basic camping equipment and organize hikes, food, music, archery, canoeing, fishing, and more. The program, called Wonders of Outdoor Wildlife, is $30 per family and has limited registration. Details are at wondersofwildlife.org or call 816-513-7657. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org and click on the calendar or give us a call at 816-513-7500. In addition to solving the crime, KCPD has always taken an active role in linking the families of homicide victims to services available to help them through an extremely difficult time. At the direction of Chief Forte, this victim-centered approach has now been expanded to reach families that are impacted by any violent crime with the creation of the Victims Assistant Unit. Director Doug Wisher explains. The staff is, consists of uh, sworn officers at this point, and uh, there's four of them. And what they do is they're they assigned currently aggravated assaults 
to contact victims by phone predominantly. And they basically provide uh, assistance in, in three ways. If there's crisis intervention that's required, they'll help with that. They're trained to do that. Uh, other than that, they're going to give the victim rights information and, and compensation information that is required by state statute of our police department to provide victims. If a victim of an, an aggravated assault, for example, has been shot, the detective in the case will, will try to find the, the suspect and work the case, try to get it to court for trial. But in the meantime, the victim has medical bills from the, the wound, may have need for trauma counseling, all those kind of things that, that, that are a result of the crime that occurred may, occur, may, may uh, resound into a, uh, a cascade of services that they need. And, and what we do is we try to hook them up with services that our community already provides, who can provide everything from basic needs, shelter, food, clothing, child care, transportation, and then we have a lot of partners that have, are helping us with, with mental health counseling, for trauma counseling, grief counseling, spiritual counseling, that kind of thing. Uh, we've, had, we've had a victim advocate in Jennifer Miller who's done this for many, many years. So she's, she's been doing it over 20 years. And her focus has been predominantly with homicide victims, families, survivors of homicides. And it's been very effective. And we've, we've understood, and I think Chief understood how effective that is. But we really need to expand beyond just homicide victims' families. And having a staff to, to, to be able to do what Jennifer does with additional victims like aggravated assault, robberies, uh, sex crimes, and, and all the violent crimes that are out there uh, will really help us be able to touch a lot more people. These victim assistance specialists, they are, although they are police officers and detectives, um, they are really trained to become uh, in a very real sense, uh, an entirely different element that, than we've had in our police department. If you look at Jennifer Miller and see what she does, they're, they're going to mirror what she does. Community relations is a, is a huge piece of this. Uh, the whole point of the chief uh, with one of his strategic plan objectives was to expand community policing to the entire department. So by doing this in the Investigations Bureau, it's, uh, it's a piece that hasn't been there expanded to the extent that we we now can do it and we know it works it worked with jennifer miller we'll continues to work with her so we're giving her some additional help the addition of the victims assistant unit is one more step in kcpd's commitment to positively impact the quality of life for the community we serve i'm officer shelly gaddis have a safe week Good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark McHenry with KC Parks and Recreation Department. I want to welcome you to the Penn Valley Skate Park. I'm sure several of you have been here before, but if not, uh, welcome for the first time. Uh, this skate park was made possible through the grassroots effort of the skating community, bringing awareness to the public and making awareness to the Kansas City Missouri Park Board to build a skateboard park. It was first built in 205 and add to in 212. Uh, Jimmy Lawson, who's behind me here, was our project manager to make sure that all happened. We work with the design team and the construction contractors to make that happen. Uh, we're glad you're here today, and uh, all I'm going to do now is turn the podium over to uh, Tony Hawk. Uh, I think most people know this gentleman, and um, let him make a few comments. Keep my uh, skate team, and we're just here to, to skate at parks and kind of show people what's up, build modern skateboarding, and hopefully inspire them to either get better or start themselves. Do a clinic here today? Is that how it works? Um, we're going to do an exhibition. So we have a bunch of riders. They all have uh, uh, different expertise, so they kind of cover the gamut of all the styles of skating and um, just kind of show the kids what's you know what, what the best stuff is. Today. You say kids, but I see older people, I see younger. Well, everyone's a kid at heart that skates. So that's my book.
Kitchen. And I'm just amazed we have like a homegrown superstar here. I'm like so honored to meet you. So what's a 720 and a 5? What, oh, the, however many turns that is. Oh, like degrees or something? Like, yeah. Oh, 180 is what? One. Uh, like six? No, one six. In, uh, one and a half spins. Okay. And then 720 is two full spins. Okay. And you learn to do that just by like saying, forget it, I'm, you know, I'm not scared, I'm going to try it. Yeah. 360, 360. Yeah. You wear your helmet, that's good, right? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So have you ever broken anything? No. You've really? never broken anything? No. Wow. That's a good that's good to know. <laughs> right, you seem like a caution to the yeah. wind, fearless kind yeah. of kid, so sure. but you kinda of know how to fall. Yeah. That's the key to it, right? Yeah. So you fall whatever the right way to fall is. Yeah. How many times have you skated with Tony before? Yeah. Uh it's probably gonna be my fourth time skating with Tony. Okay. Yeah. Not intimidated at all. No. Yeah. Wow. You make an app out there, but it, yeah, that'd be great. Did right. you have, it just makes us feel so good that yeah, you know we yeah. built something that's you yeah. know created or helped to create right. something so awesome. So, Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate your time. Nice to meet Thank you. you. <laughs>